Hey, remember when I made this anime effect? <laughs> well, I have an idea for another one. I think um, today's the day. We're going to do one of those zoom in on the eyes and then bunch of lines going on. It usually happens when a character realizes something and then starts going on an inner monologue. Wait, you could... You could probably add like if you have some voice effects, if you're using something like voice mod, you can probably trigger it so that it also triggers like reverb so that it actually sounds like an inner monologue. I don't know if I'm going to put that in the video. We're going to improvise the whole thing. Uh, let's get into it. Here we are in OBS. Let's create a new scene. Call it anime zoom. Nice. So in this scene, we want our video capture device. Now, the best setup for your camera is to have it in its own specific scene so that you don't have problem duplicating it. But anyways, we're going to do this. Boom. And means I'll have to turn it off here. I got to stay fly. Hi, here we are. So we wanted to zoom on the eyes. How do we make it so that it zooms specifically on the eyes without fault, basically? Now, of course, what I could do is probably just scale it up and then just place it where the eyes usually are when you're live streaming. If you're streaming in a chair, you know, most likely your head is going to be around here. There's not much to it. Oh, just realized my input history is on. Control R to reset transform. <laughs> but there is a face tracker plugin that you can add. And if I add this as a filter, let's go face tracker and it should. Track my face. When you first have it, it's going to do this slow zoom in. But then if you turn it off and back on, it will pop back directly to your face. Let's say that uh, this day I'm not feeling well and I'm on this side, right? Let's say that I decide to move my camera or something. My camera is like that. So absolutely not in the regular place. My face is still going to be in frame. So. If you don't want to mess around with the face tracker, I understand it. Just zoom in basically to where your eyes are usually. But I think the extra is going to make it look even cooler. <laughs> All right. So that's step one. Step two is, you know, we need to stylize this. It's not just a zoom in. It's an anime zoom in <laughs> or whatever. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is create a mask for it. I happen to have Photoshop open here. We're going to create a new canvas. You don't need Photoshop, but maybe I'll share this. This is so easy, basically. Um, to create a mask like that, you just need to remember that white reveals black hides. Control I on this white canvas. I'm going to press U to create a rectangle and we're going to have that shape that we want. OK, stroke. I'm going to turn that off. Fill. We're going to want it. The color that reveals white. Cool. And that is something that I can apply to the camera. But let's make it even cooler. I want to rotate it, maybe not that much. Yeah, minus six degrees seems fine. There you go. Now I can export this as a PNG and go back to OBS. All right. In OBS, we need a specific filter, which is image mask slash blend. Keep in mind that this is like a default filter. You don't need any plugins for that. There, go, go find it. It's right there. Bam. There it is. So this is the effect that we get. Now, how do we make it more anime? Now, keep in mind that um, if this is going to be like a redeemable thing, maybe an alert. So weird to having me zoom like that. If it's going to be a redeemable thing or an alert thing, it's going to be on top of something, right? It might be on top of your gameplay. It might be on top of your regular face. So we're going to operate with some transparency on the outside. OK, now this is the part where my memory is not great. So I'm going to go ahead and find some examples, some inspiration to rem to remind myself exactly how it looks in those animes. There's a burger at my nun's door. So by going to YouTube and typing stuff like uh, anime lines, green screen, you're going to find a whole variety of ones that you can get. So depending on how you want it to look, you can just pick and choose. Of course, you want to make sure that the YouTuber says explicitly that it's OK for you to use them. The next step here is to actually get some sound effects to go with it, because I feel like I don't provide sound effects enough anymore. And I found this one from Two Mirrors Dialogue. Of course, it's a 30 seconds video. I I don't want to tell you how to download YouTube video. This is the part where you Google something real quick and then you figure it out. But I'm going to basically download this as an audio file and I'm going to cut probably just the first part and then we'll add it to OBS Studio. OK, so here's what we have so far that I also have this just in case, but I don't think I'm going to use it. And I also have this because I wanted to show you that even if you don't have access to something like Adobe After Effects, which I have, but uh, if you don't 
and you want to still use one of those saber lines that's what the plugin is called to make that kind of effect you can download this as a stock footage and just place it on your video just you know key out the black and then you have it which means that you can also do this if you're editing on mobile. But anyways, let's just build up our scenes and then we'll have like a very simple transition to turn it on. So in order to add videos, because those are video files plus a audio file, you want to use a media source. Those are going to be my circular lines. And they're right there. So this is straight from YouTube. I didn't do anything to them. <laughs> let's go with, oh, we forgot to loop it. Double click, loop. Nice. Media source again, linear lines. It feels redundant. Nice, cool. I think that saber line is probably like too lower quality, but we'll see. Let's turn one off and let's add a chroma key filter to it. Chroma key, okay. Already pretty decent. You can play around with this, maybe the smoothness. I'm gonna copy the filter from this. I'm gonna right click on it, copy filters, go to my linear lines, right click, paste filters. Not bad. So now if you want to put some of it like behind the camera, just drag and drop it behind the camera. What I'm going to do to make sure that I don't mess around with my camera on other scenes, for example, this is that I'm actually going to add the effects to a group. I'm going to put the camera inside of a group. So right click group selected items. Instead of adding the effects directly to the camera, we can remove them. Delete face tracker, delete, although the face tracker is probably a good idea to keep it on the camera, but let's test it. Let's see what happens if we just add it to the group instead of the camera itself. Face tracker. It should work just as well. There we go. You can play around with some of the values. I don't know them enough to actually give you good advice. I put my tracking threshold at minus 40. You could put the zoom at 0.90. We'll zoom even more. Attenuation, I like to keep that at minus two. And honestly, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. So <laughs> do what you got to do. All right, I'm going to add uh, our image mask blend. There you go. And basically that's the thing that we're going to add. Now, if you want to add like extra um, filters that you have, for example, the shader filter plugin, I know has some pretty cool effects on it. Uh, you can all add that to the group. So that's the shader filter plugin. You need to install the plugin for that. I have videos on it. Go check them out. Load shader from text, browse, and we could select something like the cartoon effect. You play around with it a little more. Actually, actually not bad. Look at that. <laughs> actually not too bad. I believe there's a cell shader shader. <laughs> Cell shaded. I like it, but it messes up with the contrast. You can also stack them. This is the drawings. See I like it. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to stack it with another one. Maybe the cartoon one. Then finally, <laughs> my favorite, which is one of those chromatic aberration ones. Chroma plus UV distortion shader. Maybe too much on the distortion there. <laughs> Unless I put this on top of the image mask blend. I click on the arrows here. I'm going to bring it up, up. And now I still preserve. But I don't like the way it's curving my face though. <laughs> He's too much. He's too much. Whoop. No. Or I believe there's one called VHS something. Eh, not appropriate. It's VCR. Or you can use the edge detection one, which is pretty cool. Oh, and if you drag it down and you stack everything. OK, maybe not this one. That is a pretty dope effect, not going to lie. Now I added the glitch one. So I have videos showing showcasing every single shader filter that you have that's available with the plugin. So go check that out if you want to. All right, I'm going to make sure that I have my image mask blend all the way to the bottom because one of those shaders, the drawings actually add some alpha like it. The black part is added again. So I'm, I need to put my mask to make sure I cut it out at least here. I really like this. Anyways, <laughs> almost forgot the sound effect. Um, you can add sound effects with the exact same source as a video so media source and go find your sound in this case you don't want it to loop there's multiple ways of playing a sound to be fair we're not going to hear it but if i turn this off and on you can see it go up like this 
If you want to hear it, you want to go to advanced audio properties and find it animate SFX and you want to monitor only mute output. That means you will hear it. If you have desktop audio stream, will hear it. So it won't be heard twice. Basically, it won't be captured twice by OBS. Now, if I do this, there you go. So to keep it simple, let me collapse the group. We can just add this scene on top of, our, of any other scene, basically, and then turn off everything and then tell our trigger program like Streamerbot or whatever else you're using to that can control this to just turn all of this on at the same time. So let's do that. This is my scene. Let's say that this is my just chatting scene, right? So I would go here, find scene, find the one we just made, anime zoom. Oh. Basically, this is what it would look like. <laughs> the problem is that you might have to tell it to make it visible in each scene, which is not what we're looking for. So it's better to keep it like this. So keep it on your scene at all times. And then turn everything on manually from there. Let's do that. You can see anime zoom. It's on, but there's nothing. Let's open up Streamerbot and set that up. OK, in Streamerbot, we're going to create a new action. Right click and click add under the actions panel anime. So under sub actions, you want to right click and we're going to find OBS sources set source visibility state under scene. We want anime zoom. That's the scene. And then we're basically going to turn all of them up so you can start with HDMI. And instead of doing this over and over again, I'm just going to right click, duplicate sub action, double click, change the source. OK, do this over and over again. Duplicate sub action. Boom, boom, boom. Double click, lines, anime cam group, finally linear line. And then from there, you can pick whatever my face is there. And then from there, <laughs> and then from there, you can pick whatever uh, trigger you actually want. I just really enjoy using channel points, but you don't have to. You don't have to. It can be your sub. It can be your resub. It can be a it can be voice triggered, if you will. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to Twitch channel reward, channel reward redemption. I'm going to create the reward, give it a name, anime, zoom, give it a cost. I'm not going to keep this for my actual stream. Prompt is a description that people will see. Just click OK. Just click OK. It will select it. Click OK. And now, so now I just realized we need to turn it off. We can, if we turn it on and that's it, it's just going to stay on forever. We don't want that. So we're going to right click. We're going to set a delay. So core delay. Let's say I want it to stay three milli, 3000 milliseconds. So three seconds. And then I want all of this again, but hidden. So I'm going to start with the bottom here. I'm going to right click, duplicate sub action, double click. And this time I want the state to be hidden. You can also make it toggle, but I don't trust it. <laughs> right click, duplicate sub action, double click, hidden. That's simple. So visible, 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 visible. Wait, hidden, 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 hidden. <laughs> OK, so channel points. OK, so here we are, we're live streaming and we're going to test what we created. I'm testing it with channel points, but you don't have to. It can be a sub, it can be a resub, it can be behind 100,000 channel points. You don't have to comment saying, oh my God, people are going to spam it. You decide. This is a tutorial. You decide what you use it for. In this case, they click on anime zoom and this happens. So we actually did not get the instant zoom, which I'm not mad about. I just wanted to last five seconds. All right, so we get to test what we just created. I'm going to use channel points to test it. This is a tutorial. You can make it trigger with anything you want. Voice commands, chat commands, subs, resubs. This is just a test with channel points. <laughs> not bad. So, OK. The zoom thing, the slow zoom thing only happens the first time. But after that, apparently it's primed and it's good to go for the rest of the stream. Pretty nice. Of course, you can add like music. As I said, an idea would be to add some reverb if you're using something like voice mod to trigger that too. I believe Streamerbot is integrated, has integration with voice mod right there. I haven't tested that yet. I need to eventually. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> So make sure you subscribe so you can see more cool ideas like that. And if you have any more ideas, leave them in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Twitch where you can actually test those channel points in real time. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Go out there. Make me proud. Get level out.